Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. Now I know we're all basically feeling maybe a little bit confined in our homes right now due to obvious circumstances. But just because we're isolating ourselves from everyone else to make sure that everything can go back to normal as soon as possible doesn't mean that we still can't eat delicious foods, especially with things that are already very much likely in our cupboard. And what I'm focusing on today is some dried beans, some broth, along with the magical aid of some very typical and common spices you likely already have inside your cupboard. I'm calling this cupboard in your cupboard, all right? I think that makes sense. We're gonna make the most amazing basic bean soup and you're gonna be able to season it up however you want, with whatever you got, really. But I'm gonna give you some suggestions which I think make this soup sing really, really well. And the reason why I really wanna focus on beans right now is because, well, one, a lot of people have them in their cupboard, and two, because the Instant Pot rapidly cooks them. Forget soaking these overnight in water, completely unnecessary. These beans are gonna be turned into an absolutely delicious soup in your Instant Pot in just an hour. So guys, let's go right to the Instant Pot and take our mind off of everything else right now and start cooking something delicious. Cooking to me is therapy and I can't wait to get going. Let's do it. Starting with an onion is an option. However, onions, even if you hate them in the raw states, bring out so much wonderful, wonderful flavor when they're cooked, and they don't even really taste like onions at all. They just add wonderful flavor. So if you can get an onion, any kind will do. This is a yellow onion, really whatever size you can even get your hands on. Let's take one and dice it up. And you can also use two onions if you want, or if you don't have any onions, you don't have to use them at all. It's totally optional. It just adds a little more additional flavor. All right, so the sauteing steps for this soup are going to be totally optional if you don't have any onion, and if you don't have any garlic, which I'm gonna add a little bit in there too. Not necessary to make this soup, just nice flavor enhancers. Okay, so if you don't have these things, you'll skip the sauteing step. But since I do have them, we're gonna saute a little bit, and we'll get some extra flavor as a result. What I wanna do is I wanna add in two tablespoons or a quarter of a stick of salted butter. You can also use two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil instead if you'd wish. So let's come down to the control panel and hit the saute button and adjust so we're on the more or the high setting. Once the butter is melted and bubbling or after three minutes of any oil heating up in there like olive oil, we're going to add in our onion. And we'll saute the onion in the butter for about three minutes until it becomes a bit translucent. And after about three minutes of sauteing our onions, if we have it, let's add in three cloves or one tablespoon of crushed or minced garlic and we'll saute that up in the pot with the onions and the butter for about another minute. And again, guys, this is not required. All it does is add an extra flavor booster to the soup itself, but honestly, if we don't have these things, not a big deal. We have seasonings if we need to, and we can always season them up with onion powder or garlic powder. All right, and after another minute or so sauteing our onion and our garlic, we're gonna wanna add in six cups of a broth of your choice. Now you can use any kind of broth that you see fit for this. I use garlic broth, but what's garlic broth? Guys, this wonderful, wonderful stuff that I use, better than bouillon, it's a concentrate. Inside of a jar, it looks just like this. See that? You use one teaspoon of this mixed with one cup of water. It doesn't need to be boiled water. It can be just regular warm water mixed together, and then that creates a cup of broth. One teaspoon of the base plus one cup of water equals one cup of broth. And this has many flavors. Garlic, here's chicken, and it's also reduced sodium. They have mushroom, they have vegetable, they have beef, they have lobster, they have turkey, they have ham, they have so many different flavors. Of course, you can use any broth that you wish, or if you don't even have broth, you can use water. Again, we can season at the end. But let's just say we have nothing literally but water, beans, and some spices, that's fine. But then I just added water to the pot, and now I'm gonna add in my beans. And I'm going to add in a whole one pound bag of some great northern beans. Or you can even use cannellini beans, that's fine too. As well as navy beans, that also works. Really any kind of white bean is perfect for this, but I'm gonna use some great northern beans. My beans have not been soaked at all, not necessary. They're totally dry and I don't even care. I'm just gonna add them right to the pot. The whole bag, one pound, it's about two cups worth. I'll just give everything a quick stir in the pot. And now I'm going to secure my lid, make sure that the valve is in the sealing position. Now let's come back down to the control panel and hit the cancel or the keep warm cancel button. And then we want to hit the pressure cook or manual button depending on your model. And we want to go guys for 35 minutes at high pressure. 
And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're going to allow a 20 minute natural release. That means we do nothing for 20 minutes. And the way we know that is once a pressure cooking cycle is done, the screen then begins to count up. So once it reads 20 is when we're ready to finish with a quick release. And now that 20 minutes of a natural release have passed, we'll finish it off with a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so we'll take our lid off. And then we're going to give everything a stir. And look at this. After we stir, the beans have cooked perfectly, rapidly as well. Guys, this was fast. There was no soaking overnight, none of those shenanigans. All done, literally, in just under an hour in the pot. If you want to factor in 35 minutes plus a 20-minute natural release, you know, in the coming to pressure, we're looking at about an hour. But that's rapid speed. Now, if you wanted to, you can just simply eat the soup like this. We could season it up a little bit. But I'm going to tell you something right now. From the butter and the onions and the garlic that I already put optionally in it sautéed, it already has a decent amount of flavor to it. But we're going to now change things up a little bit. Now, you have two options here. You can either leave the soup as it is where it's really beany, just like this. Or, if you wish, you can make it a little bit thicker. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take some of my beans and I'm going to reserve them. So I'm going to take a slotted spoon here. There we go. And I'm going to put about half my beans out. Again, this is optional. And I want to reserve them inside of just, you know, anything for the time being. This little measuring cup will do just fine. So I have basically one cup of my beans in here and the rest are still in the pot. And now because I want to give my soup a nice thickness with the beans serving as the base, I want to then take an immersion blender if you have one or if you don't have one of those, you can just as well use a potato masher and mash the beans up into the soup. It'll take a little bit more time and actually give you a little bit of exercise because you know you're pushing down and stuff. But I'm going to use the immersion blender. I feel like it's a lot easier. You can also transfer the soup in batches to a regular blender and puree. Totally your choice. And again, you're only going to do this step if you want a thick soup. If you want to just leave the beans as they were to begin with, don't take them out and don't do this at all. But this is how I feel like you get the maximum results. <laughs> All right, perfect. The soup is now thickened up beautifully. Look at that, love it. And now we can take our reserve beans that we just took out and put them right back in to give it some more body. And now we have actual beans in the soup itself as opposed to it just all being pureed, which is lovely. Now guys, it's time to spice it up and season it if we wish. I'm gonna try it out. Honestly, it already tastes incredible. So I don't even need that many seasonings in here. However, I'm gonna go through my cupboard and see what I got to doctor this up a bit. Okay, so one of the key spices I always keep in my cupboard, guys, is seasoned salt. Specifically, Laurie's. I love this stuff. It's amazing, and it's like salt, but it has like so much extra flavor to it. Also, doesn't have any MSG, if that's your thing. I'm going to add two teaspoons of it. And if you don't have um, a seasoned salt, you can absolutely use regular salt. And do this to taste, if you wish. And I don't need to tell you that black pepper is probably something that's already in your pantry, right? Now, a one teaspoon. And another thing I love to add to this soup is some Italian seasoning, if you have that. If you don't, that's not a big deal at all. I'm going to add in one teaspoon of that. I found some dried thyme in my cupboard, so you can use that if you'd like to as well. One teaspoon should do the trick. And again, guys, you don't need to add the Italian seasoning or the thyme. Those are just optional things. I would just honestly suggest adding the seasoned salt or regular salt and black pepper, okay? If you didn't have any garlic in the beginning or any onion, and if you have a garlic powder or if you have onion powder, you can add in about one to two teaspoons of each of those now because that's also going to add some wonderful flavor, okay? If you didn't add the butter, the onion, and the garlic in the beginning when we sauteed, probably the flavor won't be as strong as it is right now, but this is going to certainly help bring that out. But because I already have onion and garlic in there, I'm not going to add these powders in. Just know if you have them in your cupboard, not a bad idea to add one to two teaspoons of each. Ooh, ooh, I found some liquid smoke. Guys, this stuff goes a long way and it creates this wonderful smoky flavor. I'm just going to add in a half a teaspoon of it. Again, totally optional. This is all about what you have in your cupboard. Let's add that in there. And what do you know? I found some maple syrup. Guys, this actually goes so good in bean soups, believe it or not. It's a wonderful little slight sweet flavor to offset a wonderful savory one. I'm going to add in one tablespoon of the real deal maple syrup. Although if you have like the other stuff that's typically not real deal, like those other brands, those will work just fine too if you have to. And that's all I'm going to put in there, guys. So I'm going to stir all this up into my soup. Looking fantastic. You know what? 
I have one more thing I want to add to this. I had some leftover bacon from this morning. So guys, this is about, I'd say, uh, about four strips of bacon. I'm going to add it into the soup. Why not? You don't have to add it in. Or you can just add bacon bits if you have bacon bits. You don't have to bake bacon. But it's going to be a nice touch. I love a nice smokiness to my bean soup. And I feel like bacon is a really nice touch. And you know what? If you want a little bit of a kick to your soup, add a little bit of hot sauce to it if you have some. Whatever you got in your cupboard's fine. A few dashes to taste and just stir it around. Every hot sauce, of course, varies, so just, you know, use your best judgment there. But you get where I'm going here, guys. This soup is literally what you make of it. As long as you have the beans and the broth, the rest is completely done based on how you wish to season it. And of course, you can always do it to taste. And now, we are ready to serve this absolutely delicious basic bean soup up. Looking perfect. Look at that consistency. Exactly what we want here. And look at this soup, guys. Look at how hearty and perfect this is. It's super comforting and so easy to make. Literally takes no time at all, except for when a pressure cooks. But at that point, you don't have to do anything. You can sit down, catch up on some Netflix, have some wine. And if you want to top it off with some more bacon bits, by all means, feel free. All right, in the meantime, I'm going to try this out. Here we go. All right, guys, here's the soup. And now let's try it out. Look at this. All these beans in here. It's a perfect consistency. Loving this. We're talking a load as a flavor. Literally, with spices that are really very simply found already probably in our cupboard. We're talking some seasoned salt or regular salt, some black pepper. If you happen to have some dried thyme, awesome. And if you have Italian seasoning, great too. Maybe some garlic powder or onion powder. If you don't have those things, that's totally fine though, because truth be told, it's gonna be fine even with just a little bit of seasoning. It's really quite flavorful. Of course, if you have some liquid smoke and you have some maple syrup and some bacon to add to it, it's gonna make it just that much more spectacular. But that's totally up to you. Especially if you're a vegetarian, you may not even want bacon in the soup. But I mean, look at this soup. It's a delicious soup, delightful. And perfectly made in the Instant Pot, quickly. Dried beans, guys, without soaking them, done in one hour. This is a super comforting, very flavorful soup that will last a while in the fridge, as well as the freezer, of course. So guys, here you go, literally two ingredients is all you need. You just really need those beans, and you really need uh, the broth or water. It's really the key ingredients to making this thing. And of course, for extra flavor, it's not gonna hurt to have a few key spices. I especially suggest seasoned salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder, if you don't have um, real actual onions and garlic. And I do love to add some thyme and Italian seasoning to it and any other fixings you feel like. The point is, open your cupboards, see what you like, whatever spices. If you like ground mustard powder, put that in there. Some ground ginger even, put that in there. If you want all spice in it, have a ball, have fun. It'll be Christmas all over again. The choice is yours. Just always start with less spices and do it to taste because if you overspice something and you don't really love a seasoning or someone else in the family doesn't care for it, well, it'll be a little bit too late at that point. So just be mindful and start with less and always add more. Oh, I also do love adding hot sauce to this. It's a nice little touch. So there you have it, guys. I got you covered, really. Covered in your cupboard is what I'm calling this. Thank you so much again for watching. Check out any recipes of mine at PressureLookCooking.com. I have a cookbook coming out. You do not want to miss that. It comes out April 14th. Pre-order it anywhere books are sold. Just simply search for Pressure Luck or Jeffrey Eisner. Um, and of course, Facebook.com slash PressureLookCooking and like that page for any time new up updates come out, um, humor, we all need that right now, don't we? And uh, deals on items, and of course, at Pressure Luck, subscribe to me on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified, Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much again, guys, and remember, as long as you keep your pantry with the necessities, you're never, ever, ever gonna be disappointed with what you can make in your Instant Pot with recipes from Pressure Luck. Enjoy, stay safe, be kind to one another, and eat delicious food. Take care. Thank you.